Okay, we're back with another extremely valuable video on the channel. Today I'm making another video about selling AI infrastructure because I made one a couple days ago and it got a few thousand views. My DMs have been flooded of people asking me, can you make another video explaining a bit more in depth how it works um, and all the details around it. Same in the YouTube comment sections, it went crazy. So that's exactly what I'm doing in this video. I'm going to explain what it is, why the market is shifting, how I've been able to double my clients uh, monthly recurring revenue from 30k to about 50k a month how i'm able to sign clients how to get great results niche selection your advanced pricing structure everything is going to be covered in this video so make sure you stick around for all of it it's going to be one hell of a ride so let's start at the top because i don't want to make this too complicated although some people were confused in the last video somehow i don't understand because it's a very simple concept what is it so essentially this business model is where you place a hard asset like an AI appointment setter, which is an example, and you place it into different social media channels of your client's business. So you find a client, let's say they're, I don't know, some type of B2B company. They get lead flow, they get traffic, they get people to DM them on Facebook, Instagram. Maybe they have a bunch of funnels that are running, so they're getting information. What they need is an appointment setter. However, the problem with appointment setters is that they're unreliable. They're probably not the best when it comes to speed to lead, meaning that they don't message straight away when a lead opts in or messages them. So instead, we're basically building an AI appointment setter and then placing that into the channels of your business, of your client's business. Very simple. That's all it is. So it's a convenience-based offer, meaning that you save your client's time because they don't actually have to do it manually if they were already doing it. And if they're hiring someone already, then you're going to massively cut costs and it's going to be more cost effective for your clients. And it's a, a performance offer, which most people don't think about. You're actually going to be making your clients a lot more money because you're going to be getting them more appointments. Now, how are you getting the more appointments? The AI setter is going to have really quick speed to lead. They're not going to sleep, unlike humans. Then They don't take days off because it's 24-7. So... Yeah, you're going to get an increased volume of appointments for your clients, resulting in more revenue. And we're going to cover the insane results I've been able to get for my clients in a second. Um, but first, I want to talk about why the market is shifting. So essentially, I get about five to 10 DMs per day with people trying to pitch me extremely outdated offers. You should know that it's not the fittest or strongest that survive. It's the ones that can adapt to their environment. Charles Darwin, you should know that. And... I get pitched so many times on a day-to-day -day basis for video editing, SEO, appointment setting. As you can see here, people trying to sell me. And if you, let me quickly zoom in a bit so you can see what, I mean, to be honest, we don't really need to zoom in. You can see this. It's just people saying, um, hey, I'll set inbound appointments on commission only, blah, blah, blah. It's the same thing. A bunch of DMs. These are different DMs, by the way, not the same one. But you get the point. People DMing me. So it is, it's, it's it's just so like annoying because why would I need a, a person who most likely doesn't work on the weekends, who isn't quick when responding to leads? Maybe they are, but they still have to sleep. This is being outplaced by AI. And what, it, what I would recommend for anyone starting is to place this setter into your own business and maybe experiment with running ads and maybe experiment with creating content and getting people to DM you to see if it works. And then once you're competent and you're confident, confident, you can then place it into other people's businesses. So this isn't a new concept, by the way. Most billionaires make all their money from private equity. They usually start in sales. I think the statistic is about 80% of billionaires start in sales. They, maybe they had a sales job when they first started because it teaches them the core fundamentals of communication, persuasion, very important skills. And then they transitioned into private equity where you add value to a business and then take equity. So it's the same concept, just on a very much smaller level in, in a much smaller B2B space. It's very simple though. We add value in the form of AI to businesses and bear in mind, this doesn't have to be your main offer. This could be a mechanism in your offer. So what I mean by a mechanism is a part of your offer. So hopefully that makes sense. But when it comes to offer construction, and I've I've created some amazing offers, I've worked with a bunch of coaches and agency owners, and the best offers in the world are ones in which have multiple mechanisms that work in conjunction with each other whilst not having to spend too much time 
on those mechanisms so they can yield great results without having to spend too much time delivering those results. So the problem with Facebook ads or another heavy done for you service, which most of you are doing probably, is that you're constantly a slave to your clients. And I have literally done this. I ran a done for you virtual assistant agency to 15, 20 clients and I was a literal slave. I hated it. It was one of the worst things I've ever done. So yeah, this is why it just makes sense. So you need to think about what mechanisms can you add to the back end of your offer to increase the value, increase the money you make for your clients whilst not having to work too much in the business and rather you can work on it. And this is an example of a mechanism, which is like an AI appointment setter. However, there's a bunch of other ones that you can do research on. So the key is to have a productized offer. Now, what I mean by this is one that is very, um, you can replicate because if you're working with different clients in different niches, providing different services, you're never going to scale that to big numbers. Yes, you can get a few clients, but it's going to be messy. So you need to productize the offer. And a very easy way to do this is to build the snapshot template, whether it's Zapier, OpenAI, VoiceFlow, ManyChat, whatever you're going to build the AI on, the AI solution on, create that as a template, and then you can replicate that into businesses. Obviously, you need to change the prompts, you need to change the knowledge base. There's obviously change things you need to change, but you get the point. So one thing also to know is that if the client's lead flow is bad, then the AI setter won't be effective. So going back to the work in conjunction, you can have mechanisms that can increase traffic without having to spend too much time on it as well. So you can add multiple mechanisms and then pile that up into a really good offer. Or what you could do is you could have this AI setter as a downsell or an upsell. So you can get clients with exactly what you're doing right now and then just downsell them this. Really simple. Um, and let me explain how this works. So got a client from 31k to about 50k obviously they took payments on different payment processes so it wasn't just stripe as you can see here um and this is accurate february 12th to about yeah march 12th march 13th which is the date as i'm recording this so the the reason it works so well is because it dials in speed to lead meaning the the ai setter responds immediately we were running ads on in addition to it and everything was just going smoothly so it, it, it does help if you have a client who already has the funnel in place, but they just aren't utilizing AI. Those are the best clients. And that's what I'd highly recommend going for when it comes to choosing your niche. However, if you're starting out, you probably can't be too picky. So I recommend just going with whatever you get if it's literally your first client. Um, and I also recommend yeah doing this yourself and then placing it into other people's businesses. And you can also do free trials if it's your first client. Yes, you could do a setup fee. You can always, on a sales call, you can always say that the setup fee is going to be 2K or 1K. And if you're getting heavy price, uh, price resistance and you've narrowed it down to the root cause of the objection, then don't worry. You can always just scrap the setup fee if it's your very first client because the value of you working with them and improving your skill set and gaining experience when it comes to delivery is going to be, is going to outweigh the advantages for them massively because it'll do you more good. Um, yeah, and that's why I, say, I explain to everyone is, yeah, if you're a beginner, just try to get a client to deliver, become confident. And I, I don't think testimonials are that important in my opinion. I think they're kind of overrated, but I think the conviction you'll get, get in yourself is massive. That's the, that's the biggest part because if you truly believed that your service was going to change people's lives, change people's businesses, and you were really confident in it that you could deliver great results then that would motivate you to do the outreach to create content and to place your offer in front of as many people in a day as you can so hopefully that makes sense about having conviction in your offer and that's why i recommend everyone doing it and placing it into their own business first to see that it's running really well and then other people's businesses so yeah that's really important um you can always do a free trial for seven days 14 days and then a rev share, just make sure you have a contract. You can use DocuSign, which is how you'd send them the contract just to make sure that they do pay you after the free trial if they want to continue. Or if you're doing any type of rev share, just make sure you do a contract because it's hard to keep track of how much revenue they're doing. Um, yeah, stuff like that. So 
that's really important. And as you can see, you can make a ton of money just from setup fees. So about 2.5K USD, 1.6K USD, 2.5K USD, I don't know, 1.5K USD. You get the point. Yeah, you get the point. It's really easy. Setup fees, amazing. Um, however, if you're starting out, wouldn't recommend doing setup fees. Um, so here's why it gets great results for clients. So it removes the human elements of it. For example, when I scaled a done-for-you virtual assistant agency to 20 clients about seven months ago, the VAs, here's what would happen. They would literally not show up and they would be ill or have internet problems or, I don't know, like a hurricane would hit the Philippines or whatever, which it's not funny, but it's this is this is why I'm laughing in a second. But they would tell me like a few days after they haven't worked. So n most people, when they're ill and they're working for someone, they would tell the boss at the end, uh, sorry, the start of the day that they can't make it into work. However, with virtual assistants, they literally go like two, three days or a day even, and they just tell you after instead of before, which is not helpful because if you've got clients, then that's not going to be good when it comes to expectations. And yeah, and because they're usually charging a retainer, there's a lot more pressure on you to deliver. And it's a done for you service. So the inconsistency is crazy. And managing them was an absolute nightmare. Let me put that in <laughs> bold and I'll underline it. Whereas having a AI 24 seven, 365 days setter, this is what it does. It dials in the speed to lead. So when a lead messages you or your client on Instagram or Facebook or message, it's going to make it really quick, almost instant. You can set a delay of about a minute just to make it look a bit more human. And it doesn't stop at any time. So 24 seven, it's way cheaper and it saves time and it's less risk on the client's end because it's a rev share or you can do a retainer of like 750 but i'll get to that in a second and how you would position that so it's literally a win-win situation because the client only pays you if the appointment setter is actually doing well and you don't have to manage like a massive team of virtual assistants if you want to run a appointment setting offer so it's amazing literally a win-win situation for both you and the client um so yeah now in terms of niche selection when it comes to choosing a niche it's the same principles I would say for anyone delivering any service. So it doesn't actually matter what you're providing as a service. The niche always comes first because if you know your niche, then you can create an offer that resonates. And if you can resonate, then you're going to make a lot of money. And that's all it is. Making money is just about communicating. But if you can resonate and communicate well, then you're going to do way better. And what I mean by resonate is, let's say, let's say you're a roofing company and I come to you and I say, look, I know you've got this problem. Here's a solution to it. That is going to resonate with them and they're going to want to book a call and then become a client. So don't reason by analogy. Most people reason by analogy, which is the opposite of first principles. Um, and if you know Elon Musk, you'll know about this, but most people, they literally see one person doing one thing and then they copy them and then they wonder why they can't get results. If you see someone doing something, do the opposite usually. Now, this was a very common trend because a lot of YouTube <laughs> creators told uh, yeah, beginners to do like outbound when they're creating YouTube videos. So don't do what people tell you necessarily. You should always think of it in non-binary thinking. So not a yes or no, but rather to what extent. So this is really important. Um, yeah, don't just copy what other people do in niches. All niches work, to be honest. It's just about resonating and creating an offer that has service market fit. So, yeah, think about which industry do you know best. Really important. You need to have experience because I can give you the exact same offer with the exact same service, even with the exact same outreach message or content system, and you still wouldn't get as good results as the person who understands the niche and has been in that niche for like five years. So do everything you can to choose an industry that you know a lot about and you know you can get great results for and you actually like working with them. So what's your why for helping them? For example, I used to work with fitness coaches and I still do, to be honest, a few come through. But essentially, my thought process behind it was that if I can get fitness coaches more clients, then they're going to make those clients more healthy. And it's just a generally good cycle or a loop to be in um, and I'm doing good for the world basically. So that's something to think about when it comes to niche uh, selection. Who do you know? Why? 
and yeah, those kind of things. And also you wanna make sure they do actually have some type of lead flow through channels like Instagram, Facebook, and SMS. And if they don't, then that's, I guess you wouldn't really, they wouldn't be like an ideal client, which is actually one thing here. You need to, when it comes to ICP, so ideal client profile, make sure you can actually visualize who, and yeah, yeah, maybe just who you wanna work with. What age are they? What um, demographic, actually no, let's say, <laughs> yeah, okay. What demographic are they? What characteristic traits do they have? What yeah, so for um, for example, let me let me uh, let me give you an example. So, I love working with coaches who are in their twenties, who are already doing twenty five k a month or ten, just over five figures a month. To be honest, they don't micromanage, and they don't want guarantees and shiny objects. Basically, that that's an example for me. So you need to build your own ICP. And just by having clarity around who you help and how you help them is going to be massive. So that's really important. Make sure to list out all the characteristic traits um, and stuff like that. So when it comes to pricing for AI infrastructure, right, <clears throat> always comes down to skill set and experience. Now, <laughs> okay, this is a funny example, but Donald Trump makes, I think, I think it's 1.5 million per hour for speaking at conferences which is insane because can he speak better than most people? No. Can he articulate better than most people? No. Does he have more knowledge than most people? Probably not. So why is he able to charge 1 million per hour, which is actually insane? Um, it, it's positioning. It's because he's Trump. There's no one else like him. So positioning yourself as the authority is everything. So that's why I'm so big and I tell so many people to build personal brands, whether it's on TikTok or I personally like long form, but I've got nothing against TikTok um, and Instagram. I think those are amazing platforms, but just make sure you have some type of long form content because if someone watches a 20 minute YouTube video, that's the equivalent to about 100 reels when it comes to nurturing. And we're in a business here. We're not trying to be influencers. If, when it comes to selling some type of high ticket service, long form YouTube is king, in my opinion. However, you can use TikTok and Instagram. You can post short form. You can go live once a day to nurture your audience in the middle of the funnel. So it, yeah, short form is good, good at the top of the funnel of getting people aware of like who you are. And then in the middle of the funnel, ideally you'd want to have some type of long form assets um, in which you could also go live on Instagram, TikTok, stuff like that to nurture your audience and ask, you know, answer questions and stuff like that. But positioning is everything um, and it just helps outbound as well. So when most people struggle with Instagram DMs or LinkedIn outreach, it's because they don't have a brand on that page. So if you can build a brand post content, it's going to help everything. It's the best long-term strategy. So that's really important and that, that will allow you to price uh, uh, increase the price. So here's a basic pricing structure i recommend a simple setup fee and a rev share however if they're doing more than 25k a month you can't really do more than i mean you could you could do like a 20 percent rev share if you want but most appointment setters so non-ai setters usually take about five percent it can be ten percent if it's a mid ticket offer or low ticket offer but you get the point if you can just get ten percent of someone doing 25k a month place an ai into their thing there's probably setting up, let's say it takes four hours to set it up because you've already built it for yourself. So you just need to change the prompt, have an onboarding call with them. And then let's say throughout the month, maybe there's one hour a week of maintenance, if that, to be honest. So it's about 10 hours a month for two and a half K. You can see how scalable this is. And even then you can still probably get away with a lot less. But yeah, you, you get the point. You don't need to charge massive percentages because you're only saying appointments at the end of the day. I mean, you could do per appointment. And in terms of tracking this, you basically need to make sure they record all their calls and maybe you can get access to their, their Stripe as a um, as like an employee, as a team member, you can do that. Really important. So yeah, um, if they're doing less than this though, you kind of want to charge a... Um, I mean, it, yeah, to be honest, if they're doing 10K a month plus, you can do 10% because even 1K a month, because there's so little service delivery you need to do, 
it's pretty sustainable. You can do 10% on 10K, that's still 1K. Get 10 clients, you'll be working like not too much compared to a, a regular done for you offer where it's like throughout the whole process, there's so many things that can go wrong. You have to spend a lot of time. Yeah, so if they're doing like 5K a month though, I'd recommend charging a low tier to mid ticket subscription or around 750 per month. It could be 500 a month, but it's a very scalable offer. So that's why we're able to charge a lot lower compared to like ads um, and stuff like that. So honestly, this is, yeah, really important. You can do 500 a month and you'll be fine. And you can have this as a down sell. So let's say your main offer is like, I don't know, YouTube ads for some whatever reason. You can downsell them this as, yeah, an AI setter for their channels. And it's just a good downsell to have. Um, in terms of how to actually build it, this is honestly, um, okay, so obviously getting clients is the hardest part. Um, but your first time building this is going to be kind of hard, but I wanted to explain quite simply how it works. So there's a few different ways. You can go for voice flow, in which you can place it into their Instagram, I think Facebook, other channels. There's many chat which is also good. Um, so what you'd want to do is, let's say you're placing this onto their IG. Every follower they get, you would want to use ManyChat to DM them to start a conversation. Really important. So let me repeat that. Whenever your client gets a follow on Instagram, you would go onto ManyChat and you would build a automation, a workflow that can message every new follower. So that is how you'd start a conversation. And then for, so that's like warm outbound because you're reaching out to people who know who um, your client is, whereas direct inbound, so people who just come from content and message your client first, then you would also have the AI setter set up on their channel. And it could be Facebook, it could be text message, it doesn't have to be Instagram. Um, so that's one way is using ManyChat, which is probably the easiest one to go with. Um, however, there's another one which is OpenAI, Zapier, and Go Level, which is a bit more up to date because we can get ChatGPT4. So there's no right or wrong. You can do many chat, but there isn't any ChatGPT4 as of uh, yeah. I, I don't think that I don't think so. But with this one, there is. So how it works is you would go to OpenAI, you would go to API, you would go to Assistant. So we basically need to create an assistant. As you can see, I've got one here. Um, you would put the prompt to whatever your whatever you want, basically. So your Calendly link or your client's Calendly link, put in the information of their business. Make sure you say that it's not a bot. So if they say, are you a bot? It's not going to say yes. Um, and you basically just want to prompt this out really easy. Um, and then you essentially want to get an API key. So, and you can test this as well. So if we actually click on this and click test, it should take you here. So whenever someone says like, um, Hi, can I uh, book a call like this and click run? It should say, yeah, this is Charlie. Um, and we say yes. I, don't, I can't remember if I actually put my Calendly in here, but it, it should like, send a link up. Or it may actually ask for, um, yeah, okay. So it's just asking for like emails. For, uh, so that's what it would do basically. But it's very simple. You can change the prompt. It's honestly really easy you may have to hard code it prompt into hard code prompt into zapier as well but essentially what it looks like is you would um so you would actually get the api key so if we go back here you would get an api key um you would create a new one basically because you can't actually access it once it's done and then you would basically connect that api key to zapier in which your template in zapier should look like this the first one being catch hook in webhooks by zapier um and once again, this is what it should look like. The event is a catch hook. Very simple. Conversation in ChatGPT. You can change this to conversation with assistant. I think it is this one if you want. I haven't really noticed too much of a difference. But this is how it works. Um, you can test it. You can, yeah, you get the point. And then you need to add slash update contact in lead connector 1.0, this one. So very simple and then once again you can test it you've got the account you can see that you need to fill in the fields basically you need to map it all that good stuff um, and then one thing to know is that you need the gpt assistant response message to be reply and then the gpt user response message to be um, this one so one gpt user response so if you go here 
you catch hooks, you need to make sure that it is, um, let me try and find it. Maybe it's up here. I think I missed it. Yeah, this one. So GPT user response message, really important. And then you would basically continue, you would test it. Um, and then once it's done, you would click publish and boom, you're good to go. Obviously it's a bit more complicated than that, but I don't want to make this video too long. Um, but essentially then obviously you need to make sure that you've got your API inside high level, um, which you can go to, if you go to settings inside your sub account and then go to company, God, I've got to do this off the top of my head then company profile, you should see an API key, but you, you have to connect it via Zapier basically, which is the test, which is pretty easy. So once you've done that, then you've got a fully functional, um, yeah, AI setter basically that can work on, this one's SMS, but you can do it for Instagram, Facebook, just make sure you go to integrations in your Go High Level account and basically connect your thing. You need to make sure that you have a phys uh, Facebook business page as well otherwise it won't work so that's essentially how it works and to be honest like this part is honestly the hardest like if you can get past this sometimes the webhook doesn't connect in which i recommend making a duplicate um click file duplicate the zap um, if that doesn't work try getting a new api key and if you keep tweaking it eventually works um, it's not too complicated in my opinion but it does take a few hours if you're a beginner um, and you can get a snapshot for high level as well um if you're in my school so if you're interested in that it's very cheap right now it is going up shortly but there'll be i think i'll put it in the first link in the description um you can click that link check it out if you want you basically get um yeah my go high level snapshots ai booking bots um and so much more like master classes you get the point coaching but yeah, i won't push that because um, i don't like promoting too much stuff um as you know this channel is more about just raw value and sharing everything i know with you guys for free um so yeah hopefully this video helped a bit more put in the comments actually whatever videos you want next whether you want like a full like ai set uh, service delivery for this like how to actually um do this um and set it up completely from a to z I don't know what you guys want. Um, also like the video, subscribe. Um, actually, yeah, subscribe. Please do subscribe because I think like 65% of you watching this aren't subscribed, which breaks my heart, <laughs> which is, yeah, annoying because I post quite a lot on this channel. So that would honestly mean more than anything if you could just subscribe and like um, and maybe tell your friends about it. But yeah, if not, no worries. I'll catch you in the next video. Take care and have an amazing rest of your week.